Greetings, everybody. I am the Starving Martian, and this is Thought Bubbles, where I share my thoughts on a random comic pulled from my collection. Uh, today, we're looking at Batman Might Fall. Now, if you remember, a couple months ago, we looked at uh, this issue right here, Legends of the Dark Might. It was a uh, issue of the Legends of the Dark Knight series from the uh, 90s. And if you happen to miss out on that, just check out the um, Thought Bubbles playlist. Click on my name. I'm sure you'll find it there. Uh, good issue. Very um, highly recommended. And this is uh, the issue, by the way, that brought Batmite into the 20th century. Well, technically started off in the 20th century, but brought him into the 90s at least after um, being absent from the comics for a couple decades. And uh, give him a bit of an update. And... Um, You'll definitely want to check that out if somehow you missed it. So this is the uh, follow-up. This is the sequel, Might Fall, uh, by the same creative uh, team here of Alan Grant and uh, Kevin O'Neill. And as you could probably guess, this does indeed uh, parody the Nightfall storyline that um, had recently concluded in the main Batman titles. All right, so the back of the book gives you uh, Nightfall, Night's Quest, Night's End. Now learn what might have been. And moving right along. So, the uh, first issue we looked at, Legends of the Dark Might, kind of took place in its own reality, as most of the uh, Legends of the Dark Knight series did. Um, they, they pretty much take place outside of continuity, except for... It, Stories like Venom, which introduce elements that later get uh, rolled over into the uh, main storyline. But uh, usually, the sort of thing would just take place wherever, whenever. And if you liked it, you could accept it, and if not, you could just move on. Um, this one, however, takes place inside of the um, post-crisis world of Batman, as we will soon discover. So, we pick up in Arkham Asylum uh, with the same main character from the uh, first story, a gentleman by the name of Bob Overdog. Now, if you remember from the first story, Overdog here was a criminal. He was a drug addict. And um, the entire issue, Legends of the Dark Might, takes place uh, in a period where he's heavily um, influenced by certain uh, illegal narcotics and medications. So, there's always the question of whether Batmite is real or just exists in his brain. But we see him here in Arkham Asylum. He thinks to himself, he claims that he's been, um, you know, um, healed, that uh, psychologically he's sound now, and he wants to get out of the asylum and do some good for this poor troubled world. And um, he's been encouraged by Dr. Arkham to keep a diary. And we see uh, a page here, or uh, a week rather, of his uh, diary entries. Uh, nothing interesting happened on day one. Nothing interesting happened on day two. Day three, I thought I had some flashback hallucinations, but now I'm not so sure. And then we go back to nothing interesting happened, nothing interesting happened, and someone blew up the asylum. That someone, of course, is Bane, and so we get directly into the events of... Um, Batman issue, I believe it was 491, and this was uh, the prelude to Nightfall. This is where um, Bane blows up portions of the asylum and allows all the inmates to escape. He gives them weapons and then sets them loose on Gotham City. And if you read that issue, you would know that the Joker takes um, Dr. Arkham hostage here in an attempt to drive him loony. And we see that uh, being played out here, except... Um, now we see that uh, Bob Overdog uh, interrupts and um, Joker grows bored of him and shoots him, which should kill him, but fortunately for Bob, he is protected by his diary. Uh, an old cliche that would not work in real life, do not try this. <laughs> I do not care how hard your hardcover is, uh, this will not protect you from a shotgun uh, point blank, but... Either way, Bob, like the rest of the inmates, is now freed and goes about his merry way. He soon discovers some um, criminals like he used to be and a gang very much like he used to belong to. And they're all 
uh, stoned out of their minds, much as he used to live. And so he swings down to try to teach them the uh, errors of their way. You fools! You poor misguided fools! Didn't anyone ever tell you to just say no? <laughs> and so he tries to bust up their party, separate them from their drugs, give them a little preaching, and uh, they do not respond well to it. <laughs> so uh, they kick and punch and beat him silly, and then just for kicks, since uh, he's so down on drugs, uh, give him some tabs of uh, LSD, punch him in the face for good measure, and leave him there enjoying his own sorry starry night meanwhile batman's approaching uh, arkham as um the situation is getting uh worse by the minute and batmite appears seeking help but unable to um get batman's attention and so he goes for uh mr overdog here and so once again we have a story taking place after uh bob overdog has uh ingested um, drugs, and so once again, we can't be 100% sure if any of this really happens or if he imagines the whole thing, which, again, I appreciate. It's pretty clever. Um, and we're told by Batmite, who's in um, not very good shape, that uh, an evil uh, criminal by the name of Bane Mite has appeared in the Mite dimension. And, of course, is mirroring the events taking place in the um, regular DC Universe. Where Batmite had to take down each of the evil little mites before finally confronting Bane Mite, who is pumped up on something called um, Toxic. And uh, after a fierce battle, Bane Mite gets the upper hand and Batmite feels his wrath and his kneecap. And we find out the reason that he hates him so much is because he's too darn cute by half. And, yeah, I guess he kind of is. So, um, Overdog agrees to help out in, um, defeating Bane Might and getting the, uh, Might world free again. And this is <laughs> the costume that he's given by Batmite. Obviously a reference to, uh, Jean-Paul Valley's Azrael Batman costume. Except with, um... Everything that was exaggerated about that costume exaggerated even further here. With uh, these spikes on the knuckles and these nukes on his leg and uh, everything else going on. Meanwhile, in the Might world, we get to see all our other Mites. And um, I love uh, Aquamite here. He's got uh, hooks for um, not only his one hand, but also both of his feet. <laughs> And so this is, you know, it's a parody not only of um, Nightfall, but really of uh, the entirety of um, the DC canon as it stood in, like, 1995-1996. But uh, Bane Might is able to uh, quickly take care of all of his assailants. But the super mites are coming. Perhaps they will be able to turn the tide. And we get a little bit of a Bane Mites backstory, his origin. Um, we find out that as a baby he was kept in a small cage. And he was hosed down with icy water every single morning. And that on every birthday he would be transferred to a slightly larger cage. Where he learned how to do isometric exercises and brooding. Both of which he became extremely good at. If you want any more details than that, he says, you're going to have to buy Vengeance of Bane Might, $4.95, on sale soon. Which is actually not a bad price. Sadly, that was never actually created. But, um, we, we see, uh, Overdog, or Overbat as he is now known as, <laughs> um, taking care of some crime in Gotham City. And apparently in um, the 90s era Batman, they had these signs of um, 60s era Batman. Okay. Before teleporting to the Might World, 
just as the super mites arrive. Come on, fingers. It is extremely cold up in the attic where I'm filming this, and my fingers do not want to work. So, uh, Bane Mite gets all jacked up, and um, the super mites each unleash their powers against him. I particularly like um, Super Girl Mite here. My x-ray vision will discover if he's wearing underpants. I mean, we'll make him sick from radiation poisoning. Uh, either one of those is terrible. <laughs> Uh, Supergirl Mite, you are a horrible, horrible person. But uh, the best uh, Super Mite here, I think here, is the um, Super Mite Coffin. My Super Hype will soak up his loose change. I love that DC was able to acknowledge this about themselves. That, <laughs> but, um, but none of their powers are having the slightest effect on, uh, on Bane Mite here. And he's able to uh, mop the floor with them. Actually punches uh, Super Mite back to Krypton. And through time. Hey, Moon. And then my page is thick. There we go. So he stands over the defeated forms of his foes, unleashes his ultimate power, popping them out of existence. Which leads us to the uh, grand finale here, where uh, Mr. Overdog alone has to uh, face his fears, conquer his demons before finally confronting Bane Might. And we're actually going to end the episode there because there is actually a little bit of a twist at the end. I wouldn't call it like, you know, a shocking... Um, in development or anything like that but I, I don't want to give away the ending if you feel like uh finding out for yourself this thing's not that uh, hard to come by i was able to pick it up at my local comic book shop it cost me about six bucks if not you could get it easily on uh, ebay it doesn't cost too much and uh, i would recommend both of them i would recommend uh getting yourself a copy of legends of the dark knight number 38 and uh batman might fall um i also managed by the way pick up this little guy here recently at a trip to the mall uh this is a bat Mite lego figure and it is um it's a bootleg figure this is highly unofficial and they did not actually create one of these for any real lego sets sadly enough but uh, again you could get this guy off of ebay if you want i did happen to find him like i said in a little shop in the mall that sells these sort of um you know not quite lego figures but oh, i thought he was quite adorable and uh, couldn't resist bringing him home so that is Batman Might Fall. Now, in my opinion, the first issue, uh, Legends of the Dark Might, is is the better issue. Uh, they're both they're both funny, as a um, Bat Might adventure should be. And this one is a little bit, I think, more typical of what you would expect from Bat Might. Uh, he certainly doesn't turn into a giant werewolf monster thing. <laughs> but um, but that being said, I think the first one is just more uh, more unique. Uh, has a little bit more of an edge to it, um, <clears throat> whereas this one is just, you know, I, I want a Batmite comic to be funny, but that's pretty much all this one is, it goes for the laughs, and that's about it, but it does kind of, um, it, it works, it does what it's supposed to do, so, uh, it was a prestige, uh, format, uh, graphic novel, kind of double, triple length, um, and I think it's worth hunting down, so, this has been The Starving Martian. Hope you guys enjoyed this look at Might Fall. And we will catch up with you later with another review. Until then, as I always say, keep watching the skies. And we'll catch you later. Bye.